I star in online sex videos. But it's not what you think. My most viewed video is one in which I've constructed a colorful clay model of the vagina, have placed it in between my legs, and I proceed to explain the location and function of the entire external female genitalia in thorough detail. My second most viewed is titled The Magical Clitoris, Myth or Legend, in which I talk about the relevance and the importance of the clitoris, a sex organ that should be of the utmost priority, but is often neglected. And my third most viewed are step-by-step -step instructions on how to insert a tampon. Not all teens today are well-versed or well-rounded when it comes to their sexual and reproductive health, causing a need for a new avenue in the digital age. Let me back up and share with you how I began producing online sex education videos. It was my first shift in the ER as a third year medical student. I walk into my patient's room and I find a 12 year old girl who's sitting on the gurney, crying, scared, and alone. I gently begin my interview with her and through fearful tears and a timid tone, I learn that she's bleeding from her vagina. I thought, the most obvious question is too obvious, but I ask it anyway. Are you menstruating? Am I what? Are you on your period? She continues to give me a confused and embarrassed look, and then it dawned on me. She doesn't know what a period is. I've experienced situations such as these countless times over. I've spoken with sexually active teenage girls who had never heard of the words ejaculation or come before, let alone the consequences of them. I even explained to a 26-year-old college-educated pregnant female that her baby was not inside her stomach, which is where she had believed it to be, but instead in an organ called her uterus. We are living in an era with a plethora of information at our fingertips, yet the most basic information about sex and the human body is being overlooked. So I began to ask myself, where is it exactly that teens are learning about sex education? I first turned to parents. In this cartoon, we see the father saying, I think it's time we had a talk about sex, and the son in front of his computer saying, what would you like to know? Now, as a parent, it can be embarrassing to talk to your kids about sex, so not all parents do. But my mother, for example, had taught me the name, location, and function of my entire internal and external female reproductive tract by the time I was five years old. Other parents, though, find it embarrassing to even use the words vagina or penis, and so they substitute them for terms like hoo-ha or pee-pee. But establishing shame and bashfulness around these words creates a stiff space between parents and their kids. So when kids reach their adolescent years, it only makes sense that they'd be embarrassed to talk to their parents about this. According to a study by the Guttmaker Institute, 70% of males and 78% of females have spoken to their parents in at least one of these six sex topics. How to say no to sex, methods of birth control, STDs, where to get birth control, how to prevent HIV infection, and how to use a condom. And although, as we could tell from this study, teens are speaking to their parents in some sexual health topics, other topics like consent or what's it like to lose your virginity are often omitted from conversation, leaving teens with a pocket full of unanswered questions. I then turned to school systems and looked at how sex was being taught there. 
This is a meme from the movie Mean Girls. And the teacher says, don't have sex because you will get pregnant and die. (laughs) Depending on what state a teenager lives in, they will either be taught an abstinence-only sex education curriculum, a comprehensive, all-inclusive, medically accurate, factually based, non-biased sex education curriculum, or a curriculum that falls somewhere in the middle. In 2014, the average class time spent on sex education annually in high schools was 4.2 hours and 2.7 hours in middle schools. To to obtain a driver's license, teenagers are required 50 hours of education. Within each state, Relatively few high schools teach STD and HIV prevention specifically to LGBTQ communities and questioning youth. The proportion ranges from 11% in South Dakota to 56% in Vermont. Lastly, only 13 states require that the information presented in HIV and STD prevention classes be medically accurate. Finally, I looked at the doctor's role in sex education. This is a drawing by doctor and artist Mike Natter, and the doctor here says, here, sex ed, with a bowl of condoms. According to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, a conversation about contraception is advised to be given at every visit between a physician and their adolescent patient but that's still only one conversation a year. In one study, a conversation between a doctor and their teenage patient lasted an average of 36 seconds when it came to sex education. What's even more pivotal here is that, for the most part, teens don't even feel comfortable speaking to their doctor, who essentially is a stranger, about topics like sexuality, or how do I come out to a parent? And who's to say that their doctor will even have an appropriate response? It's clear that each of these sectors has something to offer in the realm of sex education, whether it be parents, teachers, or doctors, but there are still missing gaps within our sex education system. If teens don't feel comfortable asking these groups of individuals, then who are they turning to? After realizing these gaps, I thought, what if sex education could be taught outside of the classroom, home, and doctor's office? Where is it that teens spend most of their time, and how can I gain access to that? This is when I decided to create my YouTube channel. My channel aims to educate and empower teenagers on their sexual and reproductive health, along with other taboo topics. Now, my channel isn't the only one out there that's doing this. Even though there are over 45,000 channels dedicated to beauty and fashion, and only about 15 dedicated to sex education, the latter population still has quite a following. Sex educators on YouTube, like Lacey Green, have over 1.4 million subscribers which just goes to show the demand there is for this kind of information. These sex educators are young, confident, direct, and unashamed to talk about things like female masturbation or what it's like to lose your virginity, topics which teens are curious about and want to know more about but are not taught in all school curriculums or conversations with a parent or doctor. About 85% of teens in the US use YouTube, making it the number one platform utilized by Generation Z. 95% of teens in the US have access to a smartphone, so their ability to use the internet is widespread. This means that regardless of a teenager's race, education level, or family income, Regardless of what school they attend, what state they live in, or who their parents are, they still have access to information about sex. 
Some parents believe that teaching their kids about sex education will foster a curiosity for sexual behavior at an earlier age. What I have to say to that is teens will most likely be exposed to the topic of sex, whether it be through their friends, the internet, movies, or TV shows, by the time they reach their teenage years. Surrounded by misinformation, it's important for them to have access to medically accurate, comprehensive material. Vloggers on YouTube have created a platform for teens to ask embarrassing questions on anonymously and have their fears and doubts explained. We've designed a community in which a conversation about sex is no longer shameful or embarrassing. We are filling in the gaps that other institutions have bypassed. Our videos are fun, quick, informative, and entertaining, creating an entertainment education platform for teens to learn on. Most importantly, teens feel comfortable receiving this information from someone who is young, direct, and relatable. This is a Snapchat I received from one of my followers. She says, hi, I read about your YouTube channel on Bustle and watched some of your videos and I love it. I was never taught a comprehensive sexual education in school or home, just abstinence. It's really helpful, especially now that I'm an adult and in college. It's the influence of followers like these and of my younger cousins that are a constant reminder as to why this is important and why I do this. My cousins will sit on my bed with me for hours on end while we talk about things like bejeweled butt plugs or what it's like to have sex after being sexually assaulted. Things they want to talk about but don't feel comfortable asking a parent, teacher, or doctor. Luckily, they have someone that they trust and confide in. But how about the rest of the teenagers in the world? What if they don't have a cousin, brother, sister, or friend that is knowledgeable and experienced on these topics? Who are they turning to? Sex educators on YouTube are a resource for adolescents, supporting them by filling in the gaps that other institutions have bypassed. Think of us not only as an extension of what already exists, but as a community that continues to impact teens through sex education and contribute to their understanding of sexuality long after they've passed through the classroom doors. Thank you.